For the past few weeks I have been thinking, hmm, I want to make water. Something similar to the water in Sea of Thieves. With a little bit of googling I quickly realized that that is gonna be much harder than I thought. So for the last few days I have been learning about rendering and simulating ocean waves. I went throughout some papers, watched a few videos and I need to say that I found it fascinating how quickly you can create good looking water with a little bit of math. Now I am not some professional in oceanology and all of that stuff so don't expect the most valid information from me, for that you have other sources. I'm just gonna go throughout what I've learned and share that with you from the perspective of someone that is still new to this stuff. Ok, so let's start with the most basic wave, the sine wave. Now for this simple sine wave we're gonna use an equation that is from the GPU gems on Nvidia site. But first we're gonna need a plane. So load up a blender, delete everything, add a plane and subdivide it how many times you want. Obviously the more the resolution the better quality of the wave. Then save it as an FBX and export it to Unreal Engine. Ok, so what we're gonna do is that we will translate this equation to nodes. So let's first take a sine node. We're gonna need to change the period of the default value of 1 to 2pi because that is the natural period of the sine. Now 2pi is 6.28 and so on. So let's just copy that to the node. Next up, we have a direction dot protected with the position of x and y. Now we can translate direction as a constant vector 2 and we also want to make it as a parameter. But if we change it to the parameter, it will create constant vector 4. We only want the x and y from that, so let's add a component mask and mask out the z. Now we can normalize it and what normalize does, it will shrink however long vector you have to the length of 1, but it's gonna leave the same direction. So if you increase the number in our parameter to a greater number than 1, it will scale the waves, which we don't want, that's why we normalize it. The x and y position we can get with an absolute world position node, this will give us all three axes, so we will again mask out the z position. And now we can dot product these two together. Next up we need to multiply this with the w. Now we can see here that the w equals 2 divided by l. And l is a wavelength. And wavelength is a crest to crest distance between waves in world space. So let's make a wavelength and divide it with you. Now this together is a W and we can multiply it with our dot product. Next up we need to add time multiplied with this phase constant. And here we can see that phase equals speed times 2 divided by L, which is also an W. So let's add speed and we will multiply it with our W. Then let's create time and multiply it with our phase constant. And now we can add it with everything else and plug that into sign. Ok, so the last thing we need to do in this equation is to multiply an amplitude with sign. And you can see that amplitude is in front of the sign, so we're also gonna put it in front of the sign in our shader graph. So let's add amplitude and multiply. And 
and at the last we want to push this function up on the z-axis. So to visualize it, if I increase amplitude, I want the wave to go up. And if I would push it on let's say x-axis, it would scale on x-axis and it would look squashed like this. So add and make float free node, plug it into the z and then plug 0 to the x and y. And now we can plug this into the world position offset. So we have a basic sine wave, but this is still not a Gerstner wave. So here is an equation for the Gerstner wave function. Now you don't need to be scared, most of this is already done. Next up we need to add a cosine and multiply it with the direction of x and y. So let's add a cosine. Now cosine has the same period of 2 pi, so we'll need to change that. And now let's take the direction of x and y by using component mask. And we're gonna multiply it with our cosine. Next up, we need to take an Q, multiply it with an amplitude, and then multiply it with what we have just made. Okay, so first we need to know what the Q is. Here we can see that Q is a parameter that controls the steepness of the waves. For a single wave, Q of 0 gives the usual rolling sine wave and Q of 1 gives a sharp crest. Now here we can see that Q equals Q divided by W multiplied by amplitude multiplied by num waves. And we can specify num waves as a parameter. So first let's multiply W with an amplitude. Then create a num waves parameter and multiply that with what we have multiplied before. Next we need to create Q which is steepness and divide it. And with all of this we have an QI. Now we need to multiply it with an amplitude and then we can multiply it with everything forward. We also need to plug this into the cosine and at the last we need to plug this x function into x and y into y. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is that we will make a material function out of this. Basically replace all of the parameters for function inputs. I'm gonna set a direction as a vector theory and everything else as a scalar. Next, to make a proper Gerstner waves, we will copy them four times. Then we will make four different directions. I'm gonna plug steepness and num waves to every function. Now I will plug speed, amplitude and wavelength to the first and second function. Then I will make the third and fourth function slightly different. I'm gonna multiply the direction with minus one to make it go into another direction. This way we will get crashing waves into each other. And then we will multiply the speed, amplitude and wavelength with 0.5 to make them half smaller. Ok, so this is it. Thank you so much if you watched this video until the end. If you would like to support me, you can do so by subscribing to the channel and liking the video. And if you would want to support me one step further, consider supporting me on Patreon. Again, thank you for watching and bye bye.